how it's easy it's gonna make. Oh yeah, it's horrendous. Okay, I'll have to try to stay still as much as possible. We can get you a different chair. There's one out there. Eh, we'll start with this. We'll see how it goes. Doesn't make any noise. Yeah, maybe we should. Hey, I'm Sam. I'm... I don't know how old you are. And I'm from I'm 21. I just got very nervous. Oh, you don't have to be silly. Like, give it, I'm Sam Wigglesworth. It's spelled W-I-G-G-L-E-S-W-O-R-T-H. Yeah, I'm so used to spelling it. Samantha Wigglesworth, W-I-G-G-L-E-S-W-O-R-T-H. Well, for me, how like I got into artwork was, you know, the stereotypical, I've been drawing since I was a kid, blah, blah, blah. But the main thing was when I was nine, I started talking to Donna Folk. Uh, we met up at a bizarre farmer's market and I talked my way into a class that I was three years too young for. I was supposed to be 12, I was nine. And she's like, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a chance. And I painted with her for almost every single weekend from age nine to 16. Where the drive for that came from, nobody knows. Nobody in my family is a artistic and uh, <laughs> yeah. Growing up, obviously I painted landscapes. Like that was my thing. I think because there was a freedom behind it in the Bob Ross motto of if you make a mistake, paint a tree over it. That was always what I was taught, <laughs> um, which was fantastic. I definitely learned my entire foundation of painting from Donna Folk. How to load a brush properly, how to apply background paint properly, you know, the X's and, you know, how to hold a brush, like everything like that. I learned from Donna Folk. Can you teach me some of that? Because I don't know any of those things. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely, I can. Like, absolutely. Completely making it up as I go. So obviously I grew up, you know, painting landscapes, but when I went off to university, I wanted to kind of explore more things. And I started getting more into, you know, the human body, specifically because I had a figure painting class. We had a live model uh, that we would paint. And that was so drastically different than anything I had ever done. And for me to be able to paint that freely and be encouraged to do that, it altered my entire perception, you know, and I just painted nude bodies, you know, shamelessly for a year. Somewhere along the line, it just switched to portraiture, um, which I find hilarious. And I, I, I tell the story a lot, but I kind of almost like a slight criticism against realistic portraiture artists because I never understood the point. You know, what is the point of painting a realistic portrait if you can just take a picture, right? And now, however many years later, I'm a realistic portraiture artist and I don't know how that happened. Um, <laughs> it still flabbergasts me and still me and my brother talk about it every once in a while. Like, when did this happen? I don't necessarily know if I've been taught this, but it's kind of my belief is if you are comfortable as an artist, you stop growing, you know? So I kind of realized after my Spectrum series, I got comfortable. I had a formula. Spectrum is a show that I created to represent different genders and sexualities. So growing up in this small kind of redneck town there was no real lgbt influence and especially in the art community you know there was no portrait artist let alone a queer portrait artist and 
it kind of inspired me to leave the town better than I found it. I wanted to be that representation I never saw growing up. The painting Bold is the uh, first one I did. I had never painted a person of color, you know, and it was a very challenging process to kind of think a different way in paint application. I started painting this entire series of all of these different facets of the LGBT community and what they can look like. I really stressed that. I did not want it to be a specific representation. This is a blank person. This is a blank person. It is very am ambiguous for a reason, you know? And I am not at all saying that these are all of the different representations. I am one person. This is a very small town. <laughs> I wanted it to be, you know, people can see my paintings and be less shocked when they see someone like that in their real life. You know, a lot of people, when they came and saw my show in person, it, they felt as though they recognized these people. You know, they made references to them as people in their own lives. If someone asked me, what is the correct answer? What is their gender? What is their sexuality? The answer is, I don't know. That's not the point. The point is not to guess correctly, the point is to open your mind to the possibility. With Spectrum, I feel as though that is complete. For me, that, that long journey is finished and complete. And, you know, after doing something that's so heavy and close to my heart, I wanted to do something that's, you know, a little bit more like lighthearted, but still inspiring. And I have been so inspired by this idea of interrupting a portrait. And I wanna do that in a couple different ways. One is those single line, simple drawings. I want to do one on top of a detailed portrait. Of the person? Yes, so I will do a detailed painted portrait, you know, my regular 30 hour one, and then take a paint marker and do a single line right on top of it and completely interrupt it. Another one is I want to, again, do a, you know, regular detailed portrait and embroider tattoos onto them. 